Hello and welcome to the for today's author speak session by B, uh, from the authors of the BMG Urban Quality South Asia edition. And without a further ado, I would like to call upon and welcome Dr. Sushin Shirivastav, who is a professor of the, at the Division of Neonatology and the Department of Pediatrics at University College of Medical Sciences and Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital, Delhi. He's an advisor at the NQCN and member of National Mental Group at NQCN. He's a national trainer for IMNCI, FBNC, ENCC, DSC, NEST, FOCI, and NALS. I uh, welcome you, sir, and would request you to uh, introduce our, our speakers for today. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sonam. Uh, a very warm good evening to everyone. And today on the Community of Practice platform, we are delighted to uh, uh, welcome Dr. Asim, uh, Professor Asim uh, Kumar Malik, who has uh, uh, who and his team have agreed to present uh, from their perspective a uh, quality improvement work which they are doing at their place. Dr. Asim Kumar Malik is a professor and de in Department of Pediatrics and in charge of Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at Neil Ratan uh, uh, Medici, Sarkar Medical College Hospital, Kolkata. He has been trained from Institute of uh, Health Impro uh, Improvement, U United States of America. He is a visiting observer. Uh, he has done visiting observership at Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford University in Palo Alto, USA. He is also a resource person with credential expertise in Aishman Bharat Government of India. He is a national trainer of National Neonatal Resuscitation Program (FBNC), HBNC, KMC, and Point of Care Quality Improvement. He has been mentor for online courses on uh, online national training orientation program in India on top IN. He is also an executive member of Central ne National Neurology Forum 2015. He is a member of high level task force for reduction of maternal and children mortality in West Bengal. He is also expert committee member and state mentor for reviewing and maintaining SNCUs of West Bengal. He is the chief co coordinator of FBNC training for medical officers and nursing officer of West Bengal. He is a gold medalist awardee from, for the work on essential newborn care in West Bengal at National Neurology Forum annual meeting in 2002 at Kochi. He is the recipient of India, India Gyani Fund from American Academy of Pediatrics on 2012. And he has many publications of national and international repute to his credit. So Professor Dr. Asim Kumar Malik, welcome again. And, and it's a very nice uh, evening. And thank you for uh, coming and presenting your team's work here. With that, I will request Dr. Asim to please uh, start the uh, proceedings. Before that, I will introduce uh, his uh, team members, Dr. Sayantan Mondal. Dr. Sayantan Mondal is assistant professor and a pediatric Intensive Care Unit in charge at R.G. Carr Medical College and Hospital. He is specially trained in neonatology on top and point of care quality improvement methodology from w, uh, courtesy WHO. He is also a district trainer of NSSK, SARS and NBSU programs. He is an NSSU mentor, uh, Kandi Subdivisional Hospital at Mushirabad. We also uh, uh, are happy to have, uh, yeah. So uh, with that, uh, I will request Dr. Asim to please uh, start the today's uh, uh, discussion. And uh, yeah, Dr. Asim, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Srivastava, for your kind word. And thank you also, the Nationwide Quality Care Network, for giving us this uh, their platform to share our the quality improvement works on the medication era. Uh, you all know that the medication errors are among the most common medical errors, uh, harming at least 1.5 million people every year. And error is possible in any part of the medication process, in the process of prescribing, process of transcription, uh, dispensing, administration, and also in the monitoring. And approximately, it has been shown that the 6 to 7 percent ad hospital admission appear to be medication related. And most common medication error is related to administering the 29 percent of these all. So I will want to share with the incidents which motivated me to find out this work, the medication error. Uh, once uh, I am giving the round and, and five, uh, I found that one baby weighing 1.73 kg who is suffering from bronchopulmonary dyspepsia 
and after seven days when I give the round, I saw that these faces of the baby become pushing away. I am asking, yes, this baby getting hydrocortisone? Uh, the resident says, yes, sir, this is getting at the origin. I know why the, there is a pushing out faces. Uh, and I then asked sister to show his laser. And I uh, surprisingly, we know that the, the baby's direction was hydrocortisone 1.73 milligram. But unfortunately, mistakenly, due to medication error, the baby gets 17.3. Only there is a difference of point or something points, and that means that the, the she gave baby gets too much of hydrocortisone. Uh, that's why there is a pushing oil. Then I think that this is the actual topic we have to take for quality improvement because medication there is a, everywhere in every essential NICU and everything that. And, uh, and the second thing was my that time was the PGT, and I give him this medication error topics or and scientists will share that what works we have done in our recent show. And finally, I'm saying that the to correct this medication error, we have to think of the, the five rights, that the right dose, right medication, right time, right route, and right patient. So as I have a meeting, I will maybe leave you in a few times at the 15 minutes more. And Santon will share is the, our work. And any question, I, Dr. Mukut Banerjee, who is the associate professor from Padon Medical College, she is also a partner of us. So she will also answer the question arising. So thank you. Thank you again, the Professor Sivastha, for nice introduction. So, Santon, it's now time to share. Thank you, Dr. Asim, and uh, uh, we are delighted to have this uh, discussion of how to prevent medication errors, a, a, a real case story from uh, the Dr. Asim and Dr. Santan's team. Dr. Santan, the floor is all yours. You can unmute yourself and, and, and start your presentation. We'll, be, we'll request the people to put their questions in the chat box, which we'll be taking at the end of the session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Srivastava, sir. And thank you, um, Dr. Malik, sir, for giving me this opportunity to, to do this project. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, you are audible, Dr. Santan. And, and the slide I'm is, uh, sure visible. my screen is yeah, yeah, visible. It is visible. Yeah, it is visible. Thank you. So uh, as we all heard, that this story of the medication errors started with surprising discovery which was unfortunate for the baby who was receiving uh, the medicines uh, with a slight change in a decimal place. Actually, it was during the time of my residency when I was working under Dr. Oshim Kumar Mollik and also uh, my co-guide was uh, Dr. Mukut Banerjee, who is now Associate Professor and Department of Pediatrics, Bardhaman Medical College. So after that, in our institute, the quality improvement story actually dates a little back than this. Uh, we already had some successful quality improvement projects already completed by the time, like a uh, uh, introduction of emergency medications in an emergency of the NICU to the emergent babies, and also a quick skin-to-skin -skin contact preventing hypothermia in the neonates. So we have both very successful in the, both these projects. And hence, uh, we thought of bringing this quality improvement uh, approach to this problem of the medication errors. Actually, this quality improvement, which is uh, now a very emergent and a very important term in this medical era, is actually reorganizing care with the existing resources. It is not actually a fault-finding exercise. Um, and um, thankfully, the WHO has given us the model of point of care quality improvement project, which has designed a model by which we can identify medical problems. And with the help of this model, we can approach solving the issues and uh, by reorganizing the existing resources. <clears throat> the, uh, briefly, if I go to the steps of the quality improvement model, 
it's sorry it's a problem identification forming a team and writing the problem statement analyzing the existing prop problem with the help of some quality improvement tools and uh, bringing on some change ideas testing them like in an as an experiment and then ultimately if we are successful in these small experiments in the form of those changes sustaining those changes which will bring about the final change so as sir told that the medication errors are a very preventable events and uh, is of emerging issue issues and in india we have a very few projects whenever we brought up this issue we saw by existing research we saw that there are very few projects addressing the glaring issue of the medication errors in india especially in the vulnerable age group of the neonates as we all know the neonates have very sensitive physiology uh, which have, which they are very sensitive in dealing with the medications and also their the body proportions of the fluids are very compartmentalized so that a very small change in the medications can bring about harmful effects on them our primary objective was to reduce the medication errors of the our tertiary care center and some specific objects that were designed were assess the magnitude of the problem find the cause of the problem and using this psychoai approach to deal with the medication errors uh, and see the sustain those developments in the post intervention phase our study was actually a quasi experimental study that is as a sort of a some sort of an experiment and addressing those uh, issues um, in a time to time basis the actual study population where the um, prescription and the monitoring sheets of the admitted neonates we divided the study in a baseline phase uh, intervention phase and a post intervention phase actually what we did in the baseline phase was was to collect the baseline data and existing problem we went through some randomly selected prescriptions and saw what was the actual uh, percentage of medication errors in those prescriptions um, in in a scenario where there was unknowingly to those treating physicians the baseline phase was in done anonymous then after getting the information from the baseline phase in the intervention phase we divided it into some sort of a plan do study act cycles by while we brought up some ideas and intervened on them and act in the post intervention phase we maintained those change ideas and saw whether those changes were existing the inclusion criteria depended upon those neonates and uh, whose monitoring sheets we were going to study and those neonates should have been admitted for more than 48 hours those neonates we were dead or left the service facility or had any congenital malformation within the first 48 hours of admission were not included the study tool actually included a pre designed pre tested validated checklist which we utilized for collection of the data some process flow charts the quality improvement tools like pareto charting fishbone analysis i'll be discussing these things and finally we did some statistical analysis using the charts diagrams and um, such as spss version 24 as you can see this screen this is the validated checklist that we used which had a part dealing with the demographic data of the neonate and what sort of drugs that were used uh, what are the timing of those drugs whether there it is any wrong dosage wrong timing wrong interval wrong preparation wrong route of the administration of the drugs or wrong rate any omission of the drug prescribed or any sort of other errors the types of errors that we have studied as i already discussed uh, were uh, problems in the dose time interval preparation rate route and finally omission or any transcription errors the we finally fix some definitions that's the working definitions of those errors based on some existing data in some studies and also we had our textbooks regarding the medication uh, dosage which we set as a standard and any deviation from those standards were taken as the wrong dose this approach needed a quality improvement team to be formed 
we formed a quality improvement team for taking some junior residents, some senior faculty members, nursing staffs working on the floor, and sister in charges of the facility. This team now had some mammoth tasks to do. They then analyzed the baseline data, which were done in the phase of three months and plotted in the form of errors. We found that the baseline errors were around 71.1% and the median medication error percentage was around 63%. The median missed errors were calculated using the weekly um, uh, analysis of the data, designing the median percentage. So now the team formulated an aim statement and they postulated and aimed to reduce this median medication error percentage from the baseline 63% to the less than 10% in the next nine months. The team then came up with the existing process flowchart of how a drug is being prescribed to a neonate. First of all, the neonates are admitted to the recensio. Uh, the decision of taking any drugs are taken in the daily rounds or in emergency. Then the doctors, after the daily rounds, prescribe those medicines either from their memory, what the dr drug dose they know, or as per their advice of the senior physician about the drug dosages, and then calculated using the uh, mental mathematics, put them, jotted them down in the uh, monitoring sheets and the prescription. And then these, the nurses took the orders from those prescriptions, transcribed them into the monitoring sheets from where they give drugs. And also they used to give some drugs on the verbal order of the doctors whenever in emergency. And finally, the drugs were prepared and reconstituted and the new unit received the drugs. So the problems were the, uh, the cloud portions where we can see that there was no standard guideline that was pasted in the SNCU from which each and every resident will follow to prescribe the medicine. Also, the verbal directions were possibly uh, the problem area of giving the drugs. Also, there was problems in copying the drug orders from the prescriptions to the nurses' monitoring sheets. A Fishbone analysis, which is a QI tool for addressing the problem, actually categorized the problems in some measures, people, process, environment, equipment, and materials. In the measures, we saw that uh, there was a, a definite lack of cross-checking of the advised drug dosages. Also, there was no standard drug list that was displayed in the SNCU that each and every resident or the doctor should follow. And so there was no electronic form of calculation that was going on to prevent any calculation errors. Uh, the people also had some lack of knowledge as all of us are not. Uh, machines and humans are to air or that we can also confer. Uh, there also there was no accountability for giving the prescription uh, prescriptions and the orders, and um, in the there was no single guideline that was followed, and uh, lack of positive attitude and shortage of staffs that are all prevalent in any government setup in India. A Pareto charting actually helped us reflect the major chunk of the problem. As we can see in the diagram, the 80% of the medication errors comprised of mainly problems in the dose, preparation, time, and intervals of the drugs. So our team thought of mainly focusing of our attention in this main chunk of the problem area, which comprised 80%. Now, the team came up with some change ideas. The first change ideas that any team should come up with is their strengthening of the knowledge of the doctors and the nursing staff. 
So we thought of training of the docs, existing doctors and the nursing staffs, and also displaying a standard drug chart in our neonatal unit, which should be followed by every resident for giving the orders. In this first plan, do, study, act cycle, with the first changes that we observe, that is the training of doctors and nursing staff, and the single standard drug chart, the actual med median medication error percentage in the next six weeks that calculated after implementing this idea came down to 48%. So we actually thought that is a very important change and we all took this positive reinforcement and applied, started to apply it in on a daily basis. The second change idea that we thought of was the system of cross-checking and full proofing the author in the prescription. First of all, whenever a junior resident or a junior doctor gives the order for any drug, we introduce the process of cross-checking wherever the senior faculty member will go through that prescription and countersign by checking and the calculation actual dosage of the drugs. Also, whenever a nursing staff copy, copies the order from a prescription to a monitoring sheet, uh, the sister in charge will also cross-check that process and countersign in the prescriptions. All these change ideas, in time-to-time -time basis, in each phases of six weeks, were done in few prescriptions of randomly selected, randomly selected from the existing patients and if those were found effective, then it was implemented in the next phase. This second change idea actually the brought down the median medication error percentage from 48% in the last six weeks to the 42% in the current six weeks. The third change idea, which we now thought of, is to cut off the, the manual calculation and doing computerized order entry. That will also help in legible prescriptions for easy transcription and also minimize the cumbersome error of calculating the drug dosages. Uh, this PDSA cycle uh, actually resulted in a decrease in the prescription, median prescription error percentage from 42% to 30%. So, but actually, this computerized order entry was a little cumbersome. As each computerized prescription, one resident has to sit in for the computer and type the computerized prescription for each neonate that we randomly selected, and it was very time consuming. So, thinking of that, we now thought of reinventing a process. This computerized order entry was now uh, very much reorganized in the form of designing up of a new software. With teaming up with some software professionals, the QI team gave some baseline data, of drugs, their dosages, how the drug dosages changes with the weight of the child, with the gestational age of the child, with the um, days of the age, age of the child. And then after giving this baseline data to the software professionals, they designed a software by which whenever we put the age of the child and from a drop down list, whenever we chose what drug to give, computer will itself calculate how much of the drug to give, the standard dilution of the drug, the prescribed fluid in which this the drug is to be given and over how much time. This is the software that we actually used. We have to log in from our resource facility. And this is the dashboard that was used. We have to enter, as you can see in the um, display, we have to enter some name of the patient. We have to enter the age of the patient in days. We have to enter the weight of the child, gender of the child, like bed number, create a profile of the patient. Then, after creating a profile of the patient, then we have to select the medicine 
from a drop down list the common medicines that are used like the antibiotics the theophylins the antivirals iv fluids um, et, um, et, and automatically the drug is to be calculated by the computer and it had to be then um, with basic preparation ideas with the dilution as you can see this dilution the interval and how rate of the advice to be given it is then formulated in the sort of a, sort of a prescription which we got the print preview corrected whether there is any problem or not then got the print out also we can give ventilation parameter directions the support is management that was also there was scope of giving through through this software the final prescription look somehow like this that is in the right side as we can see in the screen uh, the thermal uh, maintenance of temperature nasal drops the supportive cpap care then how much piperacillin tazolactam is to be given how much amikacin is to be given like this and it has to be thus iv fluids also how much the total fluid requirement what deductions for the vehicle fluids for the giving the antibiotics is to be done that is also can calculate and finally um, we can give the take the print out and give it is in the prescription form after in introducing this fourth pdsa cycle we were very much successful in bringing down the median medication error percentage of the um, prescriptions in the fourth pdsa and this is our, this became our main uh, weapon for bringing down the medication errors so if we now review the um, four changes that were brought in from the baseline phase through the successive pdsas uh, the first second third and the fourth pdsa we saw that the median medication error percentage came down from 63% to the 14% and in the post intervention also in the next three months of the post intervention phase the median medication error percentage also came was maintained as 10.5% and we can sustain the changes that were brought about in the plan do study act cycles now the process flow chart changed like this neonates get got admitted decisions happened in the round the drug list from the standard drug list from the computer generated prescriptions uh, from the software the um, residents and the doctors gave prescriptions generated prescriptions signed them fully then the seniors used to cross check nurses used to copy in those in medicine cards and their monitoring sheets then again cross checking by the senior nurses in nursing in charge then finally they were prepared and administered to the children this is a chart showing the individual error how statistically significantly they came down from the baseline phase that is shown in the blue to the post intervention phase that is shown in the yellow and there were significant changes in the wrong dose wrong time wrong interval and also wrong preparation wrong rate and also the total errors so by this we came to the view that by correct utilization of the existing resources and with the help of the point of care quality improvement model provided by the who the our quality improvement team could finally achieve a mammoth task of bringing down the high prevalence of the medication errors in our neonatal setup to uh, our desired um, aim statement that we actually achieved around 10% in in the successive phases and also those changes were sustained in the post intervention phase and uh, seeing this approach actually uh, we can encourage from our setup uh, neonatal setup 
the pediatric ward setup, the pediatric intensive care setups were also very much encouraged. And uh, the, all this reflection of the results also motivated the our hospital authorities to actually bring in this change in a larger setup. And I hope I have published this work in the British Medical Journal Southeast Asia edition uh, with the help of uh, the patronage from NQOC and network. I'm very much thankful all of us, uh, my guide, Dr. Professor Ashim Mollik, my senior colleague, Mrs. Mukut Badaji, who is also my co-guide, and our QI team, uh, we are very thankful to the National College, NQOC and network, actually patronizing our work and helping us showcase our work in this uh, very well-known and wide platform. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, uh, sir. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think uh, an excellent uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Santan, and a lot to learn from your example. Yes, medication errors are very, very important to be detected. And uh, in fact, going by the random uh, prescription analysis, which your team did, I think uh, inspires us a lot to have go back and look at our working stations and working areas and, and do this prescription analysis. Uh, I, there's just one question which uh, cropped up in my mind was, uh, the, the last PDSA which uh, your team did was uh, effective PDSA, in fact, was the use of uh, uh, computer generated prescription. Yes. Sir. So uh, uh, how, how you were able to uh, incorporate that uh, easily in your routine work? Because uh, going by the working of public sector hospitals, you, you will understand um, it becomes very difficult for uh, your computer generated or computer interface being used by most of the residents. So any any practical tips as to how you could- so Actually what we did, yeah. yes, thank you, sir. Thank you for your concern. Uh, actually our setup um, um, has a wide range of admissions, right? So it is divided into a, uh, not so serious patients, like in the form of a uh, baby nursery, and the serious patients, as we all know, in the SENSU and the NICU. The NICU actually has the critical most patients, and we have a working station, a computer-based station in, in that. And so we have actually implemented this software that we have designed using the software uh, experts. We have installed this software in our um, in NICU and the SNCU setup, and uh, after the daily rounds happens, actually, sir, whenever one new child gets admitted, na, once we create the profile of that child, the prescription for, for the first time takes time. But once the profile gets signed, the computer has the backup of that child. So whenever we enter that child and give search by the registration number or the bed number, that profile of the child crops up. And the last date of the prescription crops up. Any change in the prescription, we just need to add or um, uh, omit, and then the all other things adds up because that stays in the memory for the last three months. There's the memory, and then after three months, it's automatically deleted. And then uh, whenever we get the printout of those prescriptions, we incorporate the prescriptions in the BHD. So I think I think very very important lessons, uh, Doctor Satyan, that uh, initial just initial efforts of registering a patient. And, and your uh, tactical focus on a particular area of care area first to start the change idea and, and then slowly consolidate yes, your gains and then try to uh, upscale it at other I think I think a lot of uh, learnings from uh, this uh, your uh, work of Dr. Saitans and Dr. Malik's team is that uh, point of care quality improvement methodology can be used just as a step towards understanding the whole problem, starting in small measures. Uh, doing a pilot uh, changes. And uh, just another question, uh, Dr. Saitan, uh, for prescription audit, your team started, as you just mentioned, that they were doing a random uh, to get the baseline data of prescription errors. You were randomly taking up some of the prescriptions and going through that. Yes. Uh, subsequent to the PDSAs, Subsequent to the PDSAs, did your team is, uh, made some mechanisms of this random prescription analysis to as a continuous basis or your data which you have shown that it showed an improvement of baseline falling to less than 15% in the end. Uh, it was based on a random prescription analysis uh, with a fixed frequency or, or uh, 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 how, how you went about ensuring that the changes which you had put were being followed 
uh, what challenges you faced for three you you mentioned four pdss uh, last one was your uh, computerized entry the first one was regarding education and putting up your standard drug chart uh, second and third uh, how how you ensured that these changes were still continued with the change of postings and and change of transfer of residents which we also encounter at our uh, uh, this is a very important thing and i like to share what actually happened is that uh, the team was very persistent uh, the first pda as um, the baseline phase was not very difficult to do because um, uh, stealthily we used to creep in in the wards actually um, basically we and me and my team actually you go and in the nights randomly without knowing go to selected few prescriptions every week in some fixed days we used to go collect few prescriptions by randomly um, first of all we inputted all those existing patients in the random number table like as we do randomization and computer takes up the random randomly prescription selections we went in selected those prescriptions and studied those prescriptions for the baseline phase they, then we analyzed the data over 180 prescriptions were analyzed in the baseline phase now the first pdsc we train the whole existing batch in two batches like uh, we in our seminar room with the help of the qi team as the mentors all of the nursing staff in two three batches and the existing pgts junior residents and the medical officers were trained regarding the actual drug dosages what dilution needs to be given in what rate it should go over which textbook or which drug list this drug list that we prepared actually we need to follow and then uh, that was the first bds after training the subsequent weeks the for subsequent uh, six weeks of the first bds uh, in the every week we used to go and then select the random prescriptions and check whether they were giving the prescriptions through uh, correctly or not and followed that standard drug list the standard drug list were actually displayed in the each working station wherever um, we are sit in and give the advice of those drugs and also we the training when there are changes of postings of the junior residents every now and then so during the sustenance phase also this throughout 9 months we actually have uh, regular seminars and regular journal clubs that we go on through those um, pgt trainings so um, what we do or what sir ensures actually a after each change of those residents one of those seminars in the scientific seminar topics gets changed and this is uh, familiarizing with the um, software and familiarizing with the standard drug, drug list is included so that with all the changes also and with the change of the pgts also um, uh, i must inform that our seminars are ensures that the nursing staffs also are included in every seminar like every week we have one to two seminars early in the morning before start of the rounds and that seminar is attended by the every most of the working pgt and the nursing staff so uh, like in a month or two months one topic of those seminar becomes those uh, standard drug list okay. drug dosages and familiarizing with the software so by this we kept on uh, cycling the training phases with each change of the pgt rotations and also the nursing staff so that first phase was not that difficult to do the second phase was the difficult to do was cross checking um, that was little difficult because uh, after the rounds happen the senior faculty members again have to go through those already given prescription orders and also the nursing staff also copies those orders sister in charges also have to give, go through and again cross check that this was difficult to ensure Uh, also that's why we actually could not achieve a remarkable improvement after this uh, cross checking part only 48% and 42% improvement in the de decrease in the median medication error percentage but because we all know that the that um, urge and that um, every prescription of those cannot be studied and cross checked in a day to day basis that's very difficult so uh, the third or pdas that we actually thought of is that whenever we go on to calculators difficult to calculate we thought of that let's go in the computer sit and give prescriptions it was very time consuming we actually that's why didn't take that third pdsa into consideration and we did not enforce this third pdsa 
rather we designed the software and brought about this final pdsa change and followed it up in the sustainable in the post intervention phase thank you dr satin i think uh, very very important lessons key lessons from your uh, this uh, project of yours is that Uh, some of the pdss even if they are a little good sounds good but they are cumbersome for the team may be held back Definitely. and 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 rather innovated in a way that you had a software ready which helped the team members and the other important lesson perhaps for all of audience today is that reinforcement repeated uh, you can say sensitization of teams of medical teams of the ongoing project and going a successful change ideas is very very important for the sustenance of the project because most of the teams who bring up about a change which causes quality improvement are uh, found wanting to hardwire these changes with changes of teams and uh, a mechanism which you rightly pointed out as you have ongoing uh, teaching uh, training classes uh, twice per week uh, ensured that newer teams which come up about are updated about the ongoing project the useful project for most of our clinical teams medication error and patient safety is now the buzzword and and this is the gray uh, this is the area where uh, a lot of improvement and lot of fine tuning can be done uh, with the team's effort uh, i will now open this uh, platform for questions from our audience uh, any Sir, questions actually, any i have one, one thing i need to add this is yeah. many many question one question comes up whenever i discuss this thing with other persons one question crops up in every one on the others mind is why not straight away go to the designing of the software uh, that was not easy believe me that was not easy for a non medical person to understand what is a piperacillin trazodactam and what it needs to go through and um, uh, how um, to actually educate those end of uh, 3 to 4 months um, my software professional actually <laughs> understood what to give at the uh, what injections neonates receive he learned that by the end by that uh, i am getting a point so in was, fact we could not jump into uh, that software so we need to had have uh, the different steps and also we can may not have the software not every facility have the software so but the if we go on with the first and the second pcha that is the Mm-hmm. training and uh, using a standardized standard drug list standard and also drug list, cross checking yeah. and reinforcing these changes yeah yeah, yeah. that that will yeah. help immensely yeah 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 i think i think very very important yes software may not be uh, an easy uh, way out for, for starters for that matter but ultimately it showed that it drastically reduced your medication error frequency and percentage because you did not uh, rely on the human error having said that Uh, yes. repeated sensitization and having a standard drug list random checks random checks sensitizing the team for these measures are also good ways of sustaining uh, uh, your these improvement measures the house is open for uh, any questions uh, from the audience regarding this project or any any important uh, aspects which you would like to ask um, sonam do we have uh, some questions so we just have a, we have two questions from the yeah. from huzaimat shakir yeah. uh, the question is is this model effective and is it possible to get get this software and the software okay. is actually protected are the copyright act uh, and so it's not currently possible but i am making trying and um, to happen so that it's available i'll try for that because but as we all know we are very busy uh, now and uh, to make this thing operationalize is a mammoth task to perform and also it needs to go on over a large scale basis so this is a very difficult now for making the software available for others and also um, uh, regarding effectivity of the problem effectivity of this issue uh, the system is effective in a short scale basis as i said um, for the very much sick neonates where we deal with day to day not at a large scale basis uh, but uh, on a short scale basis on um, few uh, admitted babies those are very in intensive care uh, or in nicu this is effective i i think uh, what dr asim is trying to say is that the softwares have been prepared there are many softwares which are also available but the patenting and and the copyright and other issues would be a challenge and once they get through that then it can be easily available for other teams also because yes uh, calculating dose in neonates as well as in intensive care is a big 
uh, effort and many times doctors and nurses make an error inadvertently so uh, these medication errors as asim rightly pointed uh, as uh, dr saitan rightly pointed out uh, should be focused in the area where they matter most uh, select critical areas where you can have dose calculators or or pre designed uh, uh, your softwares uh, on on behalf of nqc and what we can say is that we'll try to have a look wherever the softwares are available free of cost of course because most of these softwares if available are would be charged but we'll try to make it available for our uh, members or, or or for different teams if possible but yeah a lot of work is being done in this area and we wish all the luck to saintan and his team to get this patented and copyrighted so that it is available for the use and benefit of other teams too other questions sonam can we have sir i like to invite uh, um, dr mukund banerji to share some of her experiences sure. on the world sure sure dr mukund please sorry uh, and please your your perspectives on this uh, improvement project and since you played a very key role uh, in this area and what are your uh, your suggestions for the teams who want to embark on uh, this uh, preventing medication errors which again i would say is in our blind spot uh, we we are perhaps not aware as to how much medication errors goes on in our areas so your opinion and your perspective please madam yeah uh, very good evening sir dr shantan has already presented very well about our project but sir what uh, uh, sir dr ashwin molik was uh, telling that uh, medication error is really a serious and big problem in nicu setup especially in newborn care, care setup and that's why we have took up this project and i would like to highlight that we have previously done uh, two uh, another uh, another two qi projects one was on skin to skin contact reducing in hypothermia incidences and the other was introducing by administering emergency treatment within 30 minutes of attending the patients can reduce the ultimate mortality of the patients and this is our third qi project to reduce the medication error in our institute and uh, at that time dr shanton was our pgt and that's why we took up this project and uh, we have uh, as we all know that qi model is very much effective very much effective in reducing in, in improving the quality of care of neonates at a, especially at treat, treatment facilities and most importantly i want to highlight in this qi model we can take up a few uh, small small ideas and we can implement it uh, in uh, small phases uh, in small timing not necessarily for 6 weeks you can take it a change idea for only 10 days also and you can test it in very few patients and then you can decide it whether it is effective or not if it is effective you can take up that idea or if it is not effective you can also abandon it like in our case in the first pdsa cycle was very effective by training and by preparing the drug chart and displaying it second pdsa was also effective uh, by counter signing and cross checking but it, it was uh, quite cumbersome but the third pdsa what we have done there is a computer generated prescription but in that case also the dosage was calculated by the resident only. he was calculating uh, dosage manually and then prescribing it and typing it in computer so it was not possible to reduce the error for that much but finally when we did this uh, uh, software generation then the uh, when we are putting when we were putting the age of the child the weight of the child and uh, when we choose the drug it will automatically dose was calculated automatically dilution was calculated so the chances of error was reduced and in the first uh, during the baseline phase where our medication error percentage was around 63% it came down to around uh, 14% after four pdsa cycle and even in the post intervention phase it was further down it was around 10% but that is only possible by reinforcing the training system by reinforcing the cross checking and you have to do several qi meetings with your team members you have to do several meetings with your residents with your doctors to implement this change because sustainable phase is the most difficult but otherwise you are in the pdsa cycles while you are performing pdsa cycle it is very easy to do but while you are sustaining this changes and you have to implement this changes in your nisu permanently it is very it is a big challenge okay so i want to highlight that point that if you want to really improve your quality of care in your neonatal setup you have to go for cross checking cross checking cross checking and you have to reinforce it. 
right yes, thank you thank you ma'am uh, for highlighting some key points uh, before we wrap up this session a very interesting question has been asked from one of our audience and i will throw it to the satan and dr mukut sometimes it is very common yes we see that there are a lot of verbal orders being issued or thrown uh, uh, during the teams work and how to go about it how to shouldn't uh, should we give verbal orders it should not be given or how how do you manage it and how it should be managed in critical care areas especially now you are looking after pisu as well as you also had worked in icu so what is what what is your team's approach in in regarding verbal orders uh, so especially mm-hmm. uh, during the stat orders when while the patient comes in emergency we have to give some stat medications that you have to give uh, verbal orders okay but during that time you can just uh, cross check the blood list which you have already displayed in your essences and you can tell your sister to just uh, prepare the drug from that um, uh, drug list you can prepare or you can uh, check the doses dr shantan yes yeah dr shantan dr shantan has very much importantly pointed the actual thing our nicu or essencu in the emergency area we have pasted that standard drug list so whenever our resident asks for any standard drug orders he need not also um, tell the actual dose at the our sister knows what's the dose is uh, she he or she immediately takes the advice even we say the dosage but even we verbally if they tell the dose our sister in the emergency area is already the drug list visible she constantly cross checks and she is already aware of with what dilution what medicine is to be given over how much time that much she is aware because of the ongoing things so there is very very less margin of error in the verbal but Bar- verbal orders so even if we give verbal orders there should be a process of cross checking from the sisters end also whether the verbal order is okay or not because sometimes in emergency we must give verbal orders yeah i i think i think a point beautifully made by dr mukut as well as dr saitan uh, verbal orders in critical ca- uh, care and emergency medicines are allowed but the most important part is there has to be a double check so the nurse who is going to give that emergency medication should be aware about the concentration and the general preparation of these emergency drugs and last but not the least the verbal orders have to be documented also so after the emergency has Document. passed yes sir yeah after the emergency sure, has sir. passed the the uh, the verbal orders can be put into the document and can be re-verified Yeah. sir in actually those setups which are not resource limited and ideal setups also in um, not in our I mean, our setups there is a record keeper in any emergency situ- situations as we all know the role of that record keeper is only document everything that is to be given so that uh, the automatically the record keeper documents the verbal orders so oh, yes so i think uh, the message today is for emergency medications and emergency procedures sometimes if the teams are going with verbal orders they have to be cross verified by the person who is going to administer the drug by using standard charts and subsequently it has to be made mandatory that all these emergency medications which were done on verbal orders have to be brought into the documentation part the other medications for that matter the better thing would be to go mandatory order because that keeps two things in check when the doctor will also check the dose as he is writing to the or do and third but not the least as the team has pointed out the auditing and and checking uh, with constant uh, uh, you can say sharing of the feedback with the teams ensures that the team is up to their toes because it's a continuous process of quality improvement which helps our uh, teams so with that uh, i think there is a uh, uh, there is another uh, question that what ha- after refuse regarding verbal order in in case of an error so uh, i i can't make out the, so exactly actually, what they have uh, typed but what, maybe there was what our husband yeah. shakir has asked is that sometimes there is uh, not enough in uh, cooperation among the uh, doctors and the nursing fraternity some doctor say something and later refuses or the nurse says that you said this and later so, so this is case by case and scenario basis of a particular facility for a team to work with there needs to be yeah. a proper cooperation yeah so between so, the uh, all yeah, the members yeah, i think it, it happens and, all places uh, team dynamics have to improve and what we call is verbal closed loop communication 
that means once you say a particular thing it is confirmed by the person who is going to deliver and checked uh, that that could keep the things okay and in critical care team dynamics is another thing i think satan is already hit the point uh, some people they will refuse but again we don't advise that uh, always build up your team build up trust in each other if somebody is not clear with the dose check it check ask your sister sometimes even in my residency i i clearly remember uh, my nurses used to point out the doses at times because in emergency medications many times the nurses are very clear about the doses then rather than the new resident who jumps in into that uh, icu team so uh, with that and no, certainly we want to say the, the process that needs to be followed is that whenever you give a verbal order on a medication you shout out the nurse needs to shout back and reconfirm yeah. this is yes. the actual model that is followed in the abroad and yes. there is the documentation and uh, mr husamit i'd like to um, one bring into the point is if you know vicarious liability you cannot refuse if you are the um, in charge you have to take the responsibility yeah so the responsibility rests with the team all the team doctor nurses all alike especially the senior doctor would have to bear the responsibility so always pick up your team build up that dynamics and yes uh, some medications can be given on verbal orders but they have to be documented and checked so with that i think uh, we have already extended the time duration of this session it was a very interesting session i am pretty sure that all our audiences would have been uh, forced to think uh, forced to visit their places and maybe improve uh, their uh, approach towards preventing medication errors with the beautiful example of dr mukut and dr satyan's uh, project which they have presented today so with that i thank you all for connecting to us in this evening special thanks to dr asim his team consisting of dr saitan dr mukut for bringing out such a good uh, quality improvement uh, project which has made us uh, again understand the improvement methodology and hopefully we'll all try to improve the medication errors which inadvertently happen in our areas thank you all and before you leave 